Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to another Hukai Stereo video. And today, yes, I know I'm late. Not important. What's important is we finally got the Don Hong, aka in Bible Lene's trailer, the Prodigal's Return. Now, before we get started with the video, make sure you guys hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content. Don't forget to also turn on that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on my latest uploads as well as whenever I go live on my streams. Honestly, I feel like this could be potentially Toby Kafka's one, but we'll see. We shall see how this goes. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm Barbara Lune, successor of the Azure Dragon. Oh. Commander of the clouds and the rain. Tasked with watching over the ambrosial arbor. Oh. Reckless arrogance invoked the transmutation arcanum. Guilty of unpardonable sins. Oh. Whoa. Death. Oh wait, this this goes hard. Wait a minute. <laughs> he looks cool. Fantilia, if you wish to obstruct me, oh I damn! Whoa! Oh, okay, that yeah, that looks sick. That's what I like about these trailers. They're like so graphic. Wait. Oh, I was like, who's that? But never mind. Oh, here comes a drop. Oh, you okay, I guess not. Redemption is within your grasp. It's a 1v1. Oh, yeah! Fight for a new life. <laughs> new world wow, look at that! Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Do you really think you have a choice Whoa, time? look at that. Oh, that's it? I'm waiting. Wait, that felt so short. Wait a minute. Wow, that was really good. I like the part where some parts of it, the highlight here especially, this was sick. I mean, most of the scenery and, and everything, like all the scenes here, it's all just straight up wallpaper material. It's crazy. That was something. All right, folks, on to JP. Oh! Oh! That's his voice! He sounds older. Why does it sound better in Japanese, actually? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Wow. That's sick. Yeah, already that's sick, yo. And it just opens like that with his transformation. Dude, that's so cool. Bro, even the, the, the name of this character is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> sick. This is, yeah, probably my favorite shot. Damn! Yeah, he has probably like one of the coolest character designs ever, man. So he's gonna spank that bit. Yeah, that part goes hard. Damn! Look at that, that's so cool. Four headed dragon, that's crazy. That was the trailer. I'm not gonna lie, that was actually pretty crazy. But is it the best one? Uh I think I still gotta give the crown to Kafka, at least for right now. Sorry about that, bro. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. But you know what? So I really, really enjoyed it. It really was embracing his whole like harmonious theme, especially with his regular form to his in Barbara Lene form. It was really cool. And you know, hope to see what we're gonna be looking forward to in the next update with his current story. Alright, folks, there's actually one more video that we're gonna be reacting to because Hoiver's actually just released this like about a few hours ago, so we'll be checking that out. Okay, so we're going to be reacting to a video called Mirage Celestial Trailer History of the Zen Shao Zyodus of the Five Dragons. Okay, here we go. I have traversed great lengths. Oh, three minutes. Okay, this is long. History. What? History 
of long the permanence. I too know little of the progenitor of all dragons. Oh, I love this animation. Before the dawn of history. Okay, I'll actually listen. Here we go. the burgeoning chaos, seeking the answer to existence. And on that path, That's the beautiful. revelation of the permanence was unraveled. Then came our the egg? emergence, us, long scions. I visited Liaris, a world encircled by five suns. The giant dragon sat overseeing the turning of day and night, the change oh. of seasons, sheltering the lives within. Could the revelation of the permanent signify the timeless nature of one's greatness? The relentless pursuit of individual immortality will only breed an unending multitude of malevolent creatures. Whoa. Dude, Donhog is so much lore. This is crazy. So then does the permanence represent the continuance of bloodline? I also journey to the ancestral home of the Infernalian people in the land of white embers. The undead dragon Typhon's breath showered flames on the land. Oh, of the what the f is that? Long scions are dispersed throughout countless worlds, living in solitude. In the vastness of the universe, the rise and fall of one race is of little consequence. It is said that the Vidyana formed an alliance with the Xianzhou, and that five elders descended upon the mortal realm to keep watch over the plague mobs. Oh, so that's how it happened? Interesting. Permanence is the noble ambition that ensures the safety of the universe. <sighs> Alas, Imbibitor Lune forsook his oath, causing a state of great disorder. The High Whoa. Elders, too, bear mortal frailties. Just because they, they help the mortals, that's crazy. Ultimately becoming the shackles which bind them. From your perspective, what does the Permanence's revelation truly signify? As the sun and moon rise and fall, the world undergoes continuous change. Sounds crazy, though. So concept of is beautiful. Is meaningless. Only by comprehending and aligning with the way of the world can one's path lead to everlasting existence. What am I? I are these all the dragons? Wow, that's cool. We'll go one by one individually. Wow, these are cool. This is the true teaching of the permanence. Within the cycle of life, any endpoint may mark the inception of a new journey. And for him, oh wow, damn! No different. Wow, he looks good. Whoo! Oh wow, interesting. All right, all right. That was pretty sick. That was pretty sick. Okay, let's actually go back to the the name because you know we got to deep dive into this lore here so so what's the first one called so this is called the kalarum venti oh venti's in Konkai. sorry hold on a minute high elder of the yaoqing successor of the winged dragons sovereign of storms bound to watch over the lunar embryo Ooh. okay so yeah basically moon right okay so Ardens Regia, High Elder of the Zooming. So we're getting like a lot of like locations too. Successor of the Horned Dragon, Wielder of the Heavenly Flamed, bound to watch over the Primordial Flame. Okay, so fire. This is uh, Glacier. Yeah, this is ice. Yeah. Glaciator Marum, the High Elder of the Fangu, Successor of the Scale Dragon, Tamor of the Epic Frost, bound to watch over the Miniature Marines. Marines. That's so cool. This art ink style, I love it. For the Vidyatara, this is the true teaching of the permanence. Okay. Mons Gradis, High Elder of the Yu Ching, successor of the Terrestrial Dragon, Ponder of the Kongyo Silence, bound to watch over the Follow Earth. Within the cycle of life. Wait, did I count everything? Was that four only? That was four, wasn't it? That was only four. One, two, three, yeah, four. Okay, so he must be the just they didn't reveal it. But he is the water dragon, basically. Mark the inception of a new journey. And for him, it is yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looks kind of hot. I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's go move on to the JP. That's so cool, though. So dragons are bigger than the freaking universe? What the f- 
That's insane. That's actually scary if you think about it. <laughs> that is insane. So that was three. Oh, this must be one of them, I guess, yeah? Typhoon. That's freaking nuts. That's crazy. Four, actually. Oh, never mind. I see five. The wishing summoning animation for Genshin be like. That's crazy. So are we really gonna get like Dragon Lord in the in Bible of Lune's story? That's gonna be really interesting. I think the Glacier one's so far my favorite. It just looks so cool. Ha! Huh, unintended pun. The Earth one looks old, the oldest. <laughs> Whew. That was interesting. Well, folks, if y'all like that, we're about to get into his stuff, so <laughs> I don't know why I said that. All right, folks, we're going to go on to his preview, so let's get into it. Alrighty, folks, so here is Imbibador Lorne, aka Don Hong's character preview, so we're going to be checking this out real quick. I will bear the cost of this power. All right, here we go. So here is what his full body portrait art looks like. And wow, yeah, this is already like, the fact that his dragon's made out of water is just, that is so cool, man. His type is imaginary and his path is destruction. For those who have no idea, you guys could also try him out in the version 1.2 update. I will bear the cost of this power. Okay, let's go into his stuff. Here we go. So going on to the traces. At the start of battle, it immediately regenerates a set amount of energy. Oh, that's it? Okay, that's pretty good. I wonder how much a set amount of energy is. Increase the chance to resist crowd control debuffs. And the character's crit damage increases while dealing damage to enemy targets with imaginary weakness. Oh, well, that's free crit damage. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now for the trace upgrade materials, it's the Immortal Sione. I think this is the same one as the one Jingyuan uses. Scatter Blade, that's the destruction one. This is from the Phantasm. I forgot her name, I'm sorry. The latest weekly boss we have. And then Suppressing Edict, that's uh, that's the new boss that we're going to be added to the next update. So unfortunately, we cannot pre-farm for him once he comes out. You're going to have to farm for him as soon he does come out if you're going to be planning on getting him. All right, so now on to the techniques. So here's what his technique looks like. It's like a little Hydro Dash 4. It's kind of interesting. So it is called the Heaven Quilling Prisma de Dracon. After using this technique, Don Hong and Barbara Lune enters the Leaping Dragon State, which lasts for a set duration. While in the Leaping Dragon State, using his attack enables him to move forward rapidly for a set distance, attacking all enemies. He touches and blocking all incoming attacks. After entering combat via attacking enemies in the Leaping Dragon State, Don Hong and Barbara Lune deals imaginary damage to all enemies and gains Squama. Sacron Sancta. I forgot what this does. So is it say here or no? Okay, well, it does not say here. It's one of those techniques where you're going to have to engage in combat and the effects will basically give you dealing imaginary damage to all enemies as soon as you enter battle, as well as um, you gain the Squama Sacro Sancta effect, which hopefully they'll explain what this was because honestly, I kind of forgot. I think it's just like a stacking mechanic that you get because he has a stacking mechanic, which we will get more into in a second. 
Let's go and move on to his basic attack and talents. So, unleashes two hits and attack to deal imaginary damage to a single enemy. So, there you go. Boom. And for the Righteous Heart, that's his talent. After each hit during a duration, Don Hong and Barbara Monet gains a Righteous Heart, increasing his damage. This effect is stackable and lasts until the end of the turn. Okay, so yeah, you can actually essentially deal damage even with his base attack too, so that's pretty cool. And for the Enhanced Base Attack, consumes a skill point to deliver a three-hit combo that deals a magic damage to a single enemy it is called transcendence they did say this in the version 1.3 special program as well as you know the trial that you get to use him for those who have no idea his skill has three ways of using it but the more you stack up the more it will consume your overall skill points that is the whole general idea you want to know but that is what it looks like for the enhanced basic attack too so we just went over like the first one with like his first effect what it does it just does like a double instance of imaginary damage for enhanced basic attack 2, consume 2 skill points to deliver a 5 hit combo that deals magic damage to a single target. Adjacent enemies also receive a magic damage starting from the 4th hit. So here's what it looks like once you use 2 of his skill. Boom, pow. That's going to be what the effect looks like. So it's a little bit of AoE imaginary damage. And you target 3 at once. You do like pretty much like 3 to 4 hits. So that's pretty good. So that is what it looks like. But again, once you use 2 of these stacks, you will consume 2 skill points. And then finally, for the Enhanced Basic Attack 3, so this is essentially when you consume all three stacks to deliver a 7-hit combo that deals magic damage to a single target. Adjacent enemies also receive magic damage starting from the fourth hit. So yeah, it's a bit of a, like both, but the majority of damage will be single target. So again, this is a kind of situational depending on like what you want to be using some of these Enhanced Basic Attacks. It also does you know, take accountability on how much skill points you want to be having for your next teammates. Or you don't want to be having, so it kind of also depends on what kind of characters you're going to be using for this type as well. I mean, obviously, this is most likely going to be his strongest damage enhanced base attack anyway. I mean, since you're going to be consuming the most skill points, it should deal the most amount of damage. So, yeah, interesting. But for those who have no idea, at first, that might sound like, bruh, you're going to consume three skill points just to do more damage? That sounds stupid, right? Well, let's get on to his skill. So, Draco Libre, Enhanced Basic Attack Enhancement may apply all to three times consecutively using this ability does not consume skill points and is not considered as using a skill. Enhanced ones, Benefic Lotus becomes Transcendence. Enhanced two, benefits, uh, Beneficent Lotus becomes Divine Spear. Enhanced three times, Beneficent Lotus becomes a Fulgrant Leap when using the Divine Spear or Fulgrant Leap starting from the fourth hit. Alt Roar is gained before every hit. Each stack of Alt Roar increases Don Hong's and Barbara Lunay's core damage. These stacks last until the end of his turn. Oh! After using the skill, click on Cancel to cancel the enhancement effect of the basic attack. Yeah, so that's that's cool. If you want to like, oh, if you want to go back, then you can just voice cancel. That's pretty good. All right, so on to the ultimate. Azor Aqua's Ablutes All delivers a three-hit combo that deals imaginary damage to a single target as well as a certain amount of imaginary damage to adjacent enemies. Gains Squama Sacrosancta, which stacks up to a set limit. Don Hong and Enviro Lune may consume an equivalent number of Squama Sacrosancta instead of skill points. Consuming Sacrosancta is considered equivalent to consuming skill points. Basically the same idea as you can consume the same amount of Sacrosancta, but you know, you're not consuming skill points with this. So that's interesting. That's quite interesting. So in a way, this just kind of encourages like, you know, you can just stack up as much of his stuff as possible as long as you have enough Squama Sacrosancta. So then you can do, you know, a certain amount of like a ba intense base attacks with his skill. But this is directly after you use your ult though. So though I guess the whole idea is you want to basically just keep on like using his intense base attack. Then you can gain the Sacros... What is it called again? I honestly forgot. Oh yeah, Squama Sacrosancta. The more you gain and after you use your ult, it's just essentially like free, you know, damage that you can deal with some of the sacks. So that's going to be quite of an interesting playstyle. Uh, he is quite different as for, I mean, I keep standing up for every single character, but it's true. He is quite kind of different from what we've been seeing. I mean, I guess for those who has Blade, it's kind of similar. You use his skill, but it doesn't deal damage, but it, it's, it enhances the base attack instead. Whereas him, in this case, in Barbara Lene, has three times of it. And and again, depends on like what situation you're in. You may want to do one, two, or three stacks. So I think he's definitely going to be the strongest magic damage dealer. I mean, just by looking at like what he's capable of, especially with the alt combination with his enhanced base attack, I think that's going to be a quite a strong uh, duel. But then again, we have no clue on what his stats is going to look like. They didn't even give us like the numbers on like how much stats is going to be boosted. So you know, all we can really say is until he does come onto the game officially, that we can really determine if he's going to be quite strong for the meta or not. Now, that's pretty much everything all I got. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you guys hit that like button. As well as subscribe to the channel for more this type of content. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you guys don't miss out my latest uploads as well as whenever I go live on my streams. Good luck to everyone as we be pulling for a Barbara Lene. And that is everything all I got. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, until next time, stay epic and peace out.